slide. <laughs> Daniel. Alan. Today. Hello. No, I'm just going to jump right in. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about high availability. availability. Another one of those terms that mean a whole lot of things. Yes. So what does it mean? Yeah, well, so let's talk about the use case of what happens with high availability. I mean, basically, if you think about a mission critical service, it could be like a banking service in financial services or something where it can't go down. You basically want to offer high availability. So if something goes wrong on the infrastructure, your service is still running. So why can't we just say it's always available? That would be good. <laughs> Not high availability, but always available. Always available. <laughs> Right, and that would be cool, but the problem yeah. is machines break. Yeah. Right, uh, it, stuff goes down. So it's pretty common in RFPs and things like that. You'll you'll see a requirement for the five nines, is what they'll call it, having ninety nine point nine 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 percent availability. So yeah, and I hate that number. <laughs> I hate that number because it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. Right, five nines, ninety nine point nine 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 sounds really really good. Mm -hmm. If we applied it to the U.S. airplane industry, it would mean only one crash a day. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't sound very good to me, no, right? I mean, essentially, it's a one in 10,000 kind of number. Yeah. So when you start looking at that, you've also got to have a look at what is the time frame you're looking at and things like that. More importantly, mm -hmm. you've got to have a look at what the actual use case is. Yes. Typically, high availability breaks down into two different kinds. And, and the important thing here is that you don't actually always need both of them. That's right. So the first one is what we call service availability. Mm -hmm. Can you get your job done? Yep. If a machine goes down, can you still use the website? Yep. Right? And for many situations, it's enough. Yep. Right? The other one is called session availability. Mm -hmm. And that is, if the machine goes down, does what's left still know who I am, mm -hmm. right? I've got a logged in session, I need to stay logged in. Right. It's harder to do, yep. right? But those are sort of the two breakdowns that we end up coming down to. Yep. And there's a whole bunch of ways that we can do this. Yes, there are. Like? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to the videotape. Uh, we have a picture here of access, uh, basically identity infrastructure, right? And so first and foremost, when Alan talks about things like session availability and, and being able to um, keep that identity running if something goes wrong, in access management, you need something called session failover for those use cases. And that's kind of the first scenario. We'll call it scenario one. Right. Okay. <laughs> and let's talk a little bit about what session failover is. Okay. So session failover basically means, can I hand off the responsibility of this session to some other server if I'm not here, mm -hmm. right? It's the equivalent of in a work environment where you are going on vacation for two weeks and you give the job to somebody else to do while you're gone, mm -hmm. right? And so in, in this case, if this server, this access management server goes down, you want to make sure this one's running and can do the work on its behalf. And mm -hmm. if there's a session yep. on this server, Mm -hmm. If this one goes down, then magically the session appears on the other server. That's right. right. And that's basically what we talk about with session failover. And there's lots of ways for us to do this. Yes. Right? The, the, typically what it means is that the machines need to know about each other, mm -hmm. right? and they need to cooperate mm -hmm. in some form or another. Generally, the session has to be written out to some kind of persistent store. Mm -hmm. So we have CTS, which is the core, core token, token service, service. Yeah. responsible for keeping track of tokens, right? Yeah. And that's what it's there for. Mm -hmm. So the interesting thing about this picture, right? We've drawn it here, and it looks like two sort of systems side by side. Mm -hmm. This might be a break across the country. Mm -hmm. So this, this could be North America, and this could be EMEA. I know you said country. So you but have I, an I, interesting I definition of the country. <laughs> I, need a, I need a continent. Cross the continent. Yes. Okay. I even more that. exciting. Even more exciting. <laughs> this could be solar system and <laughs> intergalactic. Uh, <laughs> yes. Right. But these don't necessarily and often aren't in the same place. Tatooine and Dor. <laughs> Come back. 
But very often they're not in the same place, so that right. if there's a natural disaster mm -hmm. or something that takes out the infrastructure more than just the data center, yeah. right? We can go to someone or, or a data center in some other part of the country or some other part so of the this, world. So this this one's really important to highlight because we do have some secret sauce here in terms we of do. making it really simple. I mean, we we basically um, embed within our access management solution that persistent mm -hmm. store that you're talking about. So you don't have to go and, and configure these freestanding databases somewhere. It's just all resident within the access management solution so that when you're configuring this, you can actually just turn on session failover and right. get the benefit of that beautiful. So all, all of that knowledge of cooperation is in the box. That's right. And all that we have to do is tell the server which other servers it's cooperating with and then they will do session failover automatically. Yep. And this could even be the New York boroughs. Staten Island? The Bronx. Okay. I'm going to keep going. With it. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. With it. How about San Francisco <laughs> and Oakland? Berkeley. 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 Okay. However, yes. there's another one that I want to put onto this. Yes. And talk about stateful and stateless sessions. Ooh. Because that's a really interesting I, one. I didn't think you were going to go there yet. Oh, I'm going to go there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Let's, let's do so, it. So, stateful sessions. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, it's the way that we've worked. And state full sessions, this little green box is the state, mm -hmm. right? And so in a state full session, there's state on the machine or on our servers, which we have to keep track of, which is why session failover had to be there and why we do with that. Yep. One of the newer things we're working with now is state list sessions. Mm -hmm. And really what that means is to say, why can't we take this information and move it up to the client, move right. it into the browser. And we're going to do a whole video on this one, right? So we'll, we'll draw the pictures out for people so they can Absolutely. see this one. But the point that I want don't, to make about it, I'm not going to scoop out of it. The point that I want to make is that with stateless sessions, the way that you define this back end infrastructure Changes. could be a whole lot simpler. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. So there's another important piece here, what I would call item two. Okay. <laughs> and this is on data replication, mm -hmm. that now I have identity data, it's stored in my directory, and I not only want that high availability and redundancy, but I want to be able to replicate that, that directory data, the identity data, across continents. Right. So just like up here we said that this cooperation was out of the box, you use the term, I want to replicate this data. That replication is out of the box with our directory server. That's right. So we can, simply by telling a directory server that we want you to cooperate with this one and how to cooperate, so what part of the tree that they're going to work with, they will set up those replication agreements to make sure that they're in sync. Yeah. I believe there's a whole Tom Petty song on this as well. It's replication. Or another video. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So. Session failover exhibit A or one <laughs> and replication. And in fact, they may well work together as well, right? Yeah. And that's basically what there is with high availability. Congratulations.